We introduce Lyra 2, an update to the visualization authoring environment built on the modern Vega and Vega Lite software stack. Lyra's newest major feature is interaction design by demonstration, a novel method for authoring interaction techniques via direct manipulation. In this video, we'll walk you through a few examples of how to use Lyra to easily create an expressive range of interactive visualizations. Let's get started by creating a new visualization in Lyra. We can import an example dataset, add a mark to our canvas, and then drag and drop the fields to the encodings that we desire on the mark. Now that we have the visualization all set up, let's add some interactivity. Now we do this by a process called interaction design by demonstration. What this means is we can demonstrate what we would like to add in terms of interactivity to the visualization directly by manipulating the chart. If we click on a point here, our interaction panel updates. And now under the hood, this is adding different selections to the Vega light spec. In this particular case, it suggests that we use a single point selection, and then we can decide what kind of application we'd like to add. In this case, we choose color, and you can see now that the selected point is colored while the rest are grayed out. And we have added interactivity to this visualization. Now there are multiple ways to add interactivity and multiple types of interactivity that Lyra affords. So we'll try again, add in another interaction. Instead of clicking, we'll drag across the visualization. A brush is automatically created. And just like that, we can add a new application for opacity. You can see that the selected points are now more opaque than the unselected points. We can also change the brush type, so it's one-dimensional instead of two-dimensional. Or we can even change the application to something that's not related to brushing, and instead we can pan and zoom when we drag across the visualization. For our next example, we're going to dive deep into how to create custom interactions in Lyra by trying to recreate the multi-series line chart with labels from the Vega Light example set. Now, as you can see, as we hover over this visualization, we have a nice mark indicating where our cursor is, marks on every single line indicating what points are being selected, and text annotations indicating what the price is of every stock at our selection. So we've recreated the non-interactive basic core of this visualization in Lyra with just some line marks and the time and price. What we're going to do is try to add some interactivity to this. So let's add a rectangle and make this become our vertical cursor. So what we'll do is set its width to one, the top to zero and the bottom to the group height. We have a vertical line and now we can add some interactivity to make this vertical line follow our cursor. So we'll add an interaction and click on the visualization and let Lyra know that, well, it's trying to interpret what we're, how we're trying to interact with the visualization and it chooses click, but what we really want is hover. We're gonna add some options here right now. We can select nearest so that we're selecting the nearest point from our mouse position. And then we want to actually select single point projected and just project it across the field of the date along the X axis encoding. And all this is saying is that no matter where our mouse is, we're going to select the points that have the same date along the X axis as our mouse. Now, when we create interactions in Lyra, Lyra exposes a bunch of signals that we can use, including mouse X. So what we'll do is select our rectangle and then drag and drop mouse X to the X position of the rectangle. And there you go. Now we have a nice vertical cursor. Now we need to add all the marks for the selection so that we can filter them based on our selection. So what we're going to do is add a circle symbol as well as some text. And I'm going to really quickly add these for every single data point on every single line in this visualization. And we'll be right back. So now we're back and we have all of our marks on the visualization, including circles for every data point on the line and price annotations for every point on every line. So we can head back to our interaction and finally add some applications. If we select size, we can set it to target the symbol and select in, uh, make the unselected marks have a size of zero. And you can see now that our marks are working. The circles are following our hover. We'll do something similar for the opacity 
and make that target our text. And we'll have the text that is unselected have an opacity of zero, effectively hiding all the other marks. And just like that, we're all set. We've effectively recreated the Vega Light example. And we have nice markers indicating the text prices of every single data point as we hover over the chart. Next up, we're going to show how we can add query widgets to make your visualizations more interactive in Lyra. We're going to be recreating the budget forecast example originally published in the New York Times and here recreated in Vega. The main interaction here is you can drag along the slider and paint essentially the lines as they grow over the years, as well as showing the projections of what the budget will be over the future years. We've recreated this visualization as a static visualization in Lyra, and now we're going to add some interactivity to it. To add a slider or any query widget, we can simply drag the field that we would want to create the widget based on and drop it below the visualization. And just like that, we have a slider and we have a panel describing options for that widget. First things first, we're going to change the comparator to less than or equal to because we want to select all the years that are below our given year. Next, we want to apply it in terms of opacity to the lines and we want everything that's unselected to be basically invisible. Now, as you can see, while we drag before and after, we can see the lines grow in real time. Now, the second part is we need to make this blue line also grow in real time based on this slider. And as we talked about before, all widgets, all interactions, they reveal new signals for us to use, and we can take advantage of that. So we're going to add a new filter to our derived budgets data set. And all we need to do is add a new clause at our filter by typing and and, then dragging our forecast year and wanting that forecast year to be less than or equal to our widgets forecast year. And now you can see that as we drag back and forth on the slider, the data itself filters based on the value of the slider and the line is drawn in real time. And we have recreated the visualization. For our last example, we're going to take a look at how we can add interactions across multiple views or groups as we call them in Lyra in a single visualization. Here we have a visualization of the weather in Seattle with a scatter plot on top and a bar chart on bottom. And we're going to add interactions to each of these views such that the interactions filter across the other views. We'll start by selecting group one and adding an interaction and demonstrating the interaction as we've done by dragging across the visualization. We'll have our interactional panel populate and we'll change this to an x-axis brush so that we're selecting a time range. And then we'll add our standard applications of color and opacity so that it's very clear the points that we have selected. Now, when we have multiple groups in Lyra, there's a new option that becomes available in applications where you're allowed to filter other groups. Now, if we select this, you can see that the bottom bar chart becomes filtered based on the selection we've made in the top group. And with that, we're all set. Now, the top visualization has a brush that shows effectively what points are being selected and the bottom visualization is updated based on that selection. Now we'll do something similar for the lower group. So let's select that, add an interaction, and then this time we're gonna uh, demonstrate a click interaction. So we'll just click on one of the bars. And now what we'll do is we want to be selecting one of these bars and filtering the points in the above visualization based on the weather that we've selected. So we're gonna click single point projected so that we can project our selection into all the points with the same weather field. We'll add our standard color application so it's very clear which bar we've selected. And then we'll select filter group one. And just like that, now as we select different bars, the top visualization gets affected and filtered based on the weather that we've selected. The best part, of course, is both of these interactions work at the same time. So as I drag across the top visualization, the bottom one updates, and then we can select bars in the bottom one and still have the top visualization update with the bar in real time. 